lesson, we're going to be looking at using some basic limit laws to help us evaluate some limits. You're going to see that this lesson requires uh, a pretty, um, I'd say, uh, your abilities in algebra are going to be tested here and making sure you know how to remember how to factor, adding rational expressions, stuff that you would have practiced a ton in algebra two and pre-calculus. So hopefully you'll feel confident about that. So here are the objectives for this lesson. All right, this lesson is pretty long, so we're going to be breaking this up in class into many days. Uh, but essentially, we're going to go over the limit laws, how we're going to use them. And then uh, probably the most complicated thing we'll talk about is the squeeze theorem. So I'm going to refer you to um, also reading the calculus for dummies section on the squeeze theorem to help you kind of understand that. OK, so let's start with some basic limit laws. So essentially, in this theorem 2.4, basic limit results. If you're taking the limit as x approaches any number a of x, then the limit will always be equal to that number a. And very similarly, if you're taking the limit as x approaches a of a constant, then the limit is always that constant. So these should be pretty uh, self-explanatory here. The idea is that as the limit as x approaches 2 of x is 2. And this one, because you have a constant, the limit as x approaches 2 of 5 is still 5. Okay, so using those basic limit laws. Now, here are the limit laws we're going to use. I'm going to try my best in the first two examples to make sure that you understand uh, what's going on in terms of uh, all these different laws. Um, there's a lot going on here, but a lot of stuff is very similar to things that you've done in the past uh, with like some difference, product quotient, things like that. But as you're going to see when we get into practicing this, is that if you are solid with your algebraic skills, then you should have no problems evaluating uh, most limits. Okay? So let's look at this first one. It says the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 4x plus 2. So I'm going to try to break this down using these different laws. So I'm going to first break it down into the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 4x plus the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 2. Now, we already kind of talked about the limit of a constant, so this one on the right. So we know that's going to be 2 at the end. I'm going to keep breaking this down uh, using this constant multiple law here that says it would become 4 times the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x. Okay, so now I've broken this down into those two basic ones that we discussed at the beginning of the lesson. So this is gonna be four times <clears throat> negative three plus this limit is two. So four times negative three is negative 12 plus two is negative 10. So the limit as x approaches negative three of four x plus two is negative 10. Let's try one more trying to break it down. I'm gonna do my best here. You might need to write into the margins a little bit. But we have the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 over x cubed plus 4. So first thing I'm going to do is break this down because this is a fraction. I'll write the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 divided by the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed plus 4. I'm going to break apart everything on the top. The limit as x approaches 2 of 2x squared minus the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 1. All over, let's break this up in the bottom, as x approaches 2 of x cubed plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 4. So you're going to see very soon this is all completely not necessary, but I'm just going to show you um, how all this works. I'm going to break down the, um, the numerator and denominator even more. So the limit as x approaches 2, I kind of put two steps here, or I put the 2 out front, and then it's going to be the limit of this x squared, right, that power minus 3 times the limit as x approaches 2 of x, and then plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 1, all over. So we have the limit 
as x approaches 2 of x, all of that cubed, plus the limit as x approaches 2 of 4. Okay, so with all that being said, I'll kind of finish it for you right now. The idea is if we just keep going, we're going to have 2 times, if you plug in that 2 here to that x, that's going to be a limit as x approaches 2 of x is 2, but you square it, so you're going to get 2 squared, minus 3 times 2 plus 1 all over. Again, you're going to plug in that 2, and then it gets cubed, plus 4. All right, so doing this gives you the answer, which is going to be, let's see, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 6 is 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2 cubed is 8 plus 4 is 12. So the answer is 1 fourth. Okay, now I'm not expecting you to do that ever again, right? Even, even paying me to do that the first time. Um, but essentially what I want you to use going forward is the idea that any time that you have a polynomial or you have a rational function that when you plug in the number doesn't make your denominator zero, you can go ahead and evaluate any limit by just plugging it in. If you plug it in and you're able to get an answer, then that's going to be the limit. So let's do this first one here using that way. So the limit as x approaches 3 of this entire rational function, just a quick check, does 3 make the denominator equal to 0? No, it doesn't. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. So I'm just going to plug in 3 for x, and that's going to be my... My limit. Ah, come on. There we go. Okay, so I already know the denominator is not 0. It's 19. 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. 18 minus 9 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So this is our limit as x approaches 3 of this entire function. Okay? So now we're going to kind of do the same thing, but we're going to have to do some algebra in order to make this work. Right, because if you look at this one, right, if you look at plugging in 3 to the denominator, you get 18 minus 15, which is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So if I were to plug in 3 right now, we'd have a problem. Right? We would not be able to just plug it in and find the limit. So what we're going to do is do some algebra. We're going to do some factoring. So this is going to factor to x times x minus 3. And then if you do this factoring of 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, right? If you do the factors of a times c that add to b, that's negative 6, and b is negative 5. So I'm going to be using, let's see, negative 6 and 1. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Excellent. So let's finish this factoring here. Factor by grouping, and you get 2x times x minus 3 plus 1 times x minus 3. So this factors as 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. All right. Now, once you do that, you can see we can cross out a common factor with the numerator and the denominator. So now we have the limit as x approaches 3 of x over 2x plus 1. All right, so I'm just going to plug in the 3 there. That gives me 3 over 2 times 3 plus 1, which is going to be 3 sevenths. So this is our answer for the limit as x approaches 3 of this entire function. Okay, let's keep going. Now this one, if I plug in negative 1, you'll notice in the denominator I'll get negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. Can't have that. So we're going to do something whenever you see this radical symbol. It's called multiplying by the conjugate. And you kind of did this a little bit. Um, you might have done this maybe once or twice in algebra 2. But the idea is for the conjugate, let's say you have square root of 3 plus 4. The conjugate of that is the square root of 3 minus 4. So when I do this, the math I'm going to do is to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. You're going to see when I do that, Make sure you do the same top and bottom. Then I'm going to get rid of the uh, radical in the top, right? And we're going to end up being able to cross something out. So let's do some math here to the side. We have the square root 
of x plus 2 minus 1 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. Now, when you multiply conjugates, how this works is the middle term will always cross out. I'll do the math here, the whole thing, but I never do the middle part because I know it's going to make 0. So square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2 is just x plus 2. Then you're going to have plus the square root of x plus 2 minus the square root of x plus 2. You'll see that makes 0, like I mentioned. And then negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So the middle part crosses out. 2 minus 1 is positive 1. So the numerator just becomes x plus 1. So that's the new numerator. Now the denominator here is going to be x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. But if you look, you'll see that we actually are able to cross out that x plus 1 common factor. So that's why I would not recommend multiplying it out in the bottom, just where you have your conjugates. So now my new limit I'm going to take is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 1 over the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. So now if I plug in negative 1, I can find an answer. So that's 1 over negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 1 half. All right, let's keep it going. Oh, this is a good one. We're going to use some um, algebraic skills of simplifying a complex fraction. So right away, if I plugged in 1, I'd get 0 on the bottom. So I'm just going to first focus on the numerator. Let's get this sorted out because that's a fraction within a fraction. So if I do 1 over x plus 1 minus 1 half, the LCD is 2 times x plus 1. So this one on the left needs to be multiplied by 2 over 2, and this one on the right by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So that's going to leave me with 2 minus x plus 1 all over 2 times x plus 1. All right, so I'm going to rewrite that in the top. 2 minus x plus 1 over 2 times x plus 1. Now watch this. All right, divided by x minus 1 over 1. So I'm going to flip the second expression so I can do multiplication here. So times 1 over x minus 1. Let's go ahead and simplify the top left numerator. 2 minus, two minus 1 is going to be 1, so that's negative x plus 1. Okay, and you might be thinking, oh, I can't cross anything out. Right now you cannot, but if you factor out a negative 1 in the, in the numerator, this becomes x minus 1. And you'll notice now I'm able to cross that out with the denominator on the expression on the right. So this simplifies to be negative 1 over 2 times x plus 1. And we will find a limit as x approaches, was it positive 1? Yes. All right, now we can plug it in without any problems. Negative 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay.